hey all hope you all are doing good so if you are starting right uh, initially when you search how to download for windows linux ubuntu and all we search right so we come across these two things called tomcat and spring boot so some of you might comment okay spring boot have its an internal tomcat so why what is this different this doesn't even make sense okay so here when we are talking spring boot or tomcat we are talking about tomcat as a standalone and spring boot which is having an internal tomcat so that is a different thing so here we are talking about spring boot and tomcat standalone okay so whatever things that i am going to, to tell today like it's not spring boot versus tomcat it is spring boot or tomcat and uh, whatever i am telling it's not going to be much technically because i am not uh, good at some terminology so i am not going to like if i don't have knowledge on some terminology i am not going to give a false knowledge so whatever i have experienced in my small tenure of unprofessional uh, development i can say so in that duration whatever i am learned whatever i have faced in terms of issues management configuration and all that is what i am going to share today so we have nine points uh, based on which I can say okay here I found this is what is good in this thing this is what is good okay so coming uh, so jumping on to the points directly the first point we have is script support so I have used JavaScript and Groovy script only these two things now which one is good as a Spring Boot or Tomcat so here I can say if you use Tomcat we have a different place to put the files Okay, if you use Spring Boot, you have again different folder structure to place your JavaScripts. Now here we are talking about external JavaScript files, but coming to inline scripts, that will be same. So script support is there both for Spring Boot and Tomcat. So it's like just have the uh, required dependencies in your lib folder and we are good. That's it. So uh, even for the inline script, for the external script, it is same. Uh, maybe there, there is a difference in the way we refer to it, like the path that's the only difference but uh, remaining thing it's same as out of spring boot or tomcat with respect to the script support next we have this java functionality okay so if if i want specifically to use a java functionality you can say okay you use tomcat your spring boot nothing matters you can make an api call and get uh, whatever java functionality exposed in an api and you can make a use of it so that is fine but it's like for every service task, for every Java task, or I can say, my functionality is mainly based out of Java. Okay, so the business logic that I'm going to write is mostly in Java. Then here we have no doubt it's for sure Spring Boot. Okay, so if you have only one, I can say, uh, task to perform which is based out of uh, Java, so you can make an API call which is exposed on Spring Boot or somewhere else. But if you have a complete flow which is dependent on some or the other java functionality it is recommend that it is recommended that uh, you try to have the engine in spring boot itself okay now yeah that that was one thing and coming to the third point which is version so if you see now currently if i use so suppose x version now if i want to use y version i can upgrade in both spring boot and tomcat but coming to the differentiation if it is spring boot I'll simply go to my pom.xm and, and I'll change the version and we are good. That's it. So it's like effort wise it is very negligible. But coming to Tomcat, of course we can do upgrade. I need to go and get the jar and paste it in the proper library and we can do that. So in terms of I can say versioning, I would prefer Spring Boot. Um, maybe uh, uh, I'm not discriminating. It's like it is easy for me to do in Spring Boot because here I simply need to change the version and we are good but in Tomcat I need to go someplace I need to download the jar and then I need to place in the lib folder I need to do all those things okay so in terms of versioning I would recommend like I use Spring Boot for like yeah, on this spe uh, specific property of version okay next we have front end so here we are not talking about any external front end or any other front end that you or I make here we are talking about front end provided by Kamunda so what what is this thing that we are talking okay so suppose there is a front end which you are already aware okay now if i want to change any specific i can say uh, the color i can say the display of uh, uh, say the number of things that are running the number of things that are done or is there anything other i want to change like i want to change the font i want to make it 
like icon compatible to some other platform as well so these kind of front end changes if i want to do in the existing kamunda ui okay first thing i can do in both okay but in spring boot it will be like i need to get the jar i need to decode that then i need to modify and then i need to build the jar out of it and then i need to make a use of it okay so this is like i would not do it, the ui changes at all if this much changes is what required of course uh, because we have flexibility but coming to tomcat you will have directly html files so you can go and you can write um, or uh, you can write anything you can modify any component so you'll find all those html files in the tomcat distribution the standard and tomcat distribution so you can do that front end changes so in terms of front end provided by kamunda if you want to do any modification and then make use of it you can do in both but i will be preferring tomcat if i want to make any changes in the existing ui now coming to custom front end if you go and search for the custom front end on the github or anywhere else you will see something called you can develop it in angular or any other frameworks but okay now uh, here how am i differentiating is yes. frameworks of angular or uh, react i can say it is much more i can say uh, similar weighted as that of spring boot framework and that of angular or react framework but when i compare with the tomcat engine and the angular framework like in comparison i can say the front end that we are using with the tomcat will be heavy weighted so uh, not going into much technicality because it is better if i don't know i should not speak on it so i feel that if i use the front end or react this kind of frameworks with tomcat there will be compatibility in terms of no incompatibility in terms of weight so it's like angular will be very heavy weighted and then this uh, tomcat is very light weighted okay so that was my next is space occupancy so here i will take a literal example that okay here my point is spring boot takes much more space than that of tomcat okay now don't go into uh, much more details about heap space xsms and all those options okay uh, keep it as as simple as possible so by default what it is like for sure tomcat or spring boot anything you can manage increase decrease space auto scaling etc etc that that is fine but coming to the default behavior i would say that a spring boot takes much more space than that of tomcat so in practical if you try to deploy the tomcat and spring boot on heroku after a certain flows right uh, the amount of space occupied by spring will be more and after crossing some threshold the same amount of workflows working on both you will say that space occupied is like the space given by heroku to us for the same applications in terms of spring boot it is already over so it will crash so uh, based on that i am saying that spring boot occupies more space okay next i have external referencing so here we are we have talked about the uh, scripts so that is already covers in script support now when we talk about forms external forms or any other kind of web app forms okay so those kind of things again we have uh, both in tomcat and spring boot so external referencing there is not much difference i can say like in both you can use without any kind of differences like in tomcat you will simply do the restart if it is a cache issue and in spring boot you will simply do the clean install if it is not detecting so the only thing is the path of referencing and the place where we uh, place the file is different so remaining functionality wise external referencing is same for both spring boot and tomcat next we have configuration so previously we have talked about the upgradation of common line right so that was one thing but if you have seen like for http connector we have different mails for spin we have different uh, i mean dependencies so for all these functionalities we do have different different Uh, i can say dependency so some of them i did not find for tomcat engine at all okay and for some of them if it is available for both still i would prefer spring boot in that case yeah it seems biased that i am more towards the spring boot but see the point is if i want to include any uh, dependency i'll simply place okay this is the dependency i want in the uh, uh, spring boot form.xml but coming to tomcat i need to go somewhere i need to uh check what is the jar i need to download and put it so configuration wise in both we can done in both we can do but i would prefer spring boot because it is like only type and it will fetch it for you okay so that's what framework is meant for like it will do functionality for you 
to avoid your manual intervention so all these things based on this i can say maintenance wise okay i'm sorry so yeah for maintenance if i talk about let's say upgradation already we talk let's say we come across any vulnerabilities let's say we have uh, some new feature that is coming across so in terms of tomcat engine again the effort wise it is required more but in uh, the spring boot it is very easy like at some point of time will come to know that it is not good to compare spring boot with tomcat because tomcat is an engine and spring boot is a framework so framework is meant for automating these kind of things okay that's why tomcat is a part of spring boot and when coming so here we are differentiating only on the distributions that we have okay so it's it's like it's not fair to compare both of them but because we have those things available and based on emails that i got like these two things are available what all things that i should use okay so that's why i made this video and coming to uh, this one point is like if you go through the documentation of kamunda so there is not much difference in the way we access it okay and there will be like for tomcat you need to mention engine rest for spring boot you'll simply mention the rest so in terms of in end user i will not see any differences in terms of developer if i want to make use of engine i simply need to see what is the parts what is the small small differences like for making api calls and all but again things like i want to make a custom api uh, and those sort of things i want to do an intercepts i want to make a thread so all these things will be like in 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 context of java i would say just go for spring boot if you have that much amount of requirement for using java functionality otherwise both are good and uh, like tomcat is very lightweighted if you compare and and if you ha don't have any restriction in terms of technology in terms of time in terms of uh, exposure in terms of like all these factors so i would say that uh, you should try both of them okay so it's like you developed a workflow right it's just not like for tomcat you will make different for spring boot you will make different so you'll use the same workflow so i would say just try to have both of them in your local or somewhere and then you can decide okay for you which is easy and of course we have documentation on both technical and technical terminologies as well so i would say like try to give both of them a shot if you don't have any kind of restrictions otherwise based on your requirement you can choose based out of these properties so yeah the, and and before coming to any conclusion if i was talking on any the any of these points let's say that i, I am not Uh, like i can say i was fully developing in spring boot most of the time though i was using tomcat i was using spring boot most of the time so it kind it can be kind of biased towards spring boot but whatever i said it is not like uh, i'm telling you to use something it is not versus again i'm repeating it is or so i am just telling what i have faced so far and based on that i have come to this bullet points and yeah that was my conclusion but yes there's a lot more new things to learn and based on which we might uh, see in future that okay this might be better than compared to but at present as of my knowledge as of my experience i mentioned out these bullet points so don't come to any conclusion directly it's just to gain more i can say exposure so yeah you also try it out and give your comments or like share your experience in the comment section so if you feel that any point uh, is like invalid or the content that i gave on any point is invalid that's fine we we are learning from you you are learning from me so you can mention that in the comment section and finally yeah stay home stay safe practice as much as possible and click on subscribe button click on notification button if you like my explanation and share it with as many people as possible so yeah that's it for today thank you